Last night about uh, 11.57 p.m., the Smith County Sheriff's Department dispatch received a 911 call uh, at our emergency operations center of a, a firearms related uh, call at the in the 18,000 block of US 69 South. Uh, upon the arrival of our first unit, which he arrived, I think his response time was five or six minutes, uh, he observed a vehicle in the parking lot at that location. He began to run a, a registration on the vehicle, at which time the occupant of the vehicle, the driver, got out of the vehicle. He had a book in his one of his hands, and his right hand was tucked in his uh, small of his back. And it was uh, the original call had something to do with somebody uh, firing a firearm at that location prior to law enforcement arriving. So once the deputy uh, observed that, he, he told the person to bring his hand out from behind his back. He didn't do it. Our second uh, ar deputy arrived about that time, at which time the uh, guy that was at the location threw the book at the first responding deputy and ran behind and crouched down behind a concrete uh, light post. The, at that time, he brought a gun out, pointed it at the deputies, and they asked him if they were talking to him, communicating with him, trying to communicate with him to get him to drop the gun. He wouldn't drop the gun, so each deputy fired at him and striking him once in the upper abdomen. Shortly after that, uh, I was notified. Uh, I notified uh, Texas Ranger Lieutenant Nick Castle, who notified one of his rangers. Uh, it, it's our policy and protocol to have a disinterested third party investigate anything such as an uh, officer-involved shooting, a jail, like we do a jail death or anything else. Uh, we have the rangers investigate it. So they responded, they got the scene rather quickly. Uh, Bullard PD in the meantime had arrived uh, to back our officers up. Bullard uh, city limits just right down the road. They responded, uh, the officer immediately got out her medical kit in a patrol vehicle and applied pressure to the wound until the emergency uh, medical services arrived and transported the person to one of the hospitals in downtown Tyler and he was, went into surgery rather quickly. Uh, he has a, what appears to be at this time non-life-threatening injuries. He's in stable condition. Uh, the ranger was able to talk to him earlier this morning. Uh, and we also decided at some point when everything got settled down to notify the uh, father and mother of the victim, well, victim, the, the subject. He's not necessarily a victim, but the subject. Uh, so they were notified and we were allowed them to uh, visit him in the hospital under our supervision. Uh, he has been served with an arrest warrant. Uh, under, he's under a $75,000 bond for assault on a, aggravated assault on a public servant. Uh, he will, once he leaves the hospital, will, be, will go to Smith County Jail. Uh, pending uh, whether or not he makes bond or he sits in the jail till his trial. And I'm going to, since the next kin has been notified at this time, uh, the individual is identified as a Jackson Lee Davis, a 25 year old from the Flint area, uh, lives in an unincorporated part of Flint. And I'll open it to any questions. Was there any idea yet of what he was doing in this parking lot um, like that late at night? Well, prior to our deputies arriving, we did, after we began looking at the parking lot, after we started the crime scene uh, investigation, there were five spent casings believed to be from his firearm around his vehicle. Some of them were on top of his vehicle, so they're obviously his. So that had to have taken place prior to our deputies arriving. And I, I'm not going to go any farther into anything that would bias the Rangers investigation because that's the reason we do an investigation uh, separately anyway. And I don't want to give out any information that would make, cause bias to that investigation. Thank you.
was there anyone in the area that they spoke with um, once officers got on the scene or the rangers got on the scene? There was no one. Uh, it was a relatively well secluded area off the road. Uh, nobody heard the shots as far as we know. Uh, we didn't get any additional calls from anyone in that area. Uh, so it was just uh, our deputies and him. And, but one good thing that we do have is we're able to have uh, not only dash cam videos, both units were facing where the uh, subject was. So we have good dash cam video as well as body cam video which will show exactly what happened. And it's already been downloaded and provided to the Rangers. They're, both deputies are on administrative leave right now, which is also uh, what we do, a standard operating procedure for, for several reasons. One, we want to make sure they're mentally able and ready to come back to work. They will be assessed by a mental health professional uh, before they come back to work. And uh, right now they're not due to be back to work until uh, not this Monday, but I think a week from Monday. But, but, but due to their days off being in the middle of that, as well as the t uh, time we're giving them off. Someone had a question. Is, uh, does this special have pretty much a criminal history? Is this is his first time. I, I can't go into criminal histories. They would take our uh, computers away from us from DPS would if we did that. <laughs> And then, did you say that anything that you can excuse me one second anything that you can find on Smith County Judicial or anything on your own is free, um, but I just can't provide a criminal history because I got that criminal history from our computer and we're not allowed to share that information. Um, I don't know if I misunderstood it. Did you say both officers shot at him? And yes. He got one hit in the panel, yes. or was yes. it two? Just he he was hidden behind a round uh, concrete uh, deal that that the light pole was attached to, so he had only a part of his body was visible, as well as the firearm. So he was behind the vehicle behind that. They were behind their vehicles, and, and I, I will go ahead and tell you, I'm very proud of our officers. They, they showed very great restraint because I've been in situations like this where magazines on the, on the weapons are emptied. There was two shots fired by us, one each, and, and then they stopped. They, they stopped the threat, and then they, they stopped shooting. And then no other injuries? No other, no injuries to our officers. Uh, just the in, the one injury, uh, which was a through and through. I think the upper ad, abdomen. Uh, again, he's undergoing surgery. He was already able to eat this morning, so he's in decent condition. Uh, but uh, rather than hitting a lot of organs, I think it did do some damage, but uh, nothing. It could have been much, much worse for him. We're, we're just glad that he is going to survive and hopefully uh, get the help he needs. Which I'll go in and add this. Y'all not, not asking, but I'll go in and add this. Uh, Smith County has a high suicide rate, which is the very importance of what we've been preaching and preaching and preaching. I have a sheriff for year after year after year the importance of getting some mental health help here in Smith County. Uh, our jail's full of people that have, that have mental issues, which puts a, a, a big burden on our jail because our one to 48 ratio goes sometimes to one to one ratio, one detention officer per inmate. We, we can't sustain that. And uh, Smith County Jail is the largest mental health facility in East Texas, and it shouldn't be. Anything else? I'm not in a hurry if y'all want, want to. Um, do you have any idea when he might be released from the hospital? We don't. Uh, we have our standing guard on him, and once he's released, he'll be taken to the Smith County Jail. And I, I don't look for it to be very many days, to be, to be honest with you. I think it'll be rather quickly. Thank you. But he'll be housed in the clinic in the jail. I guess I'll ask, um, if someone is having 
health issues, health problems in Smith County. Is there a hotline or a number that you know? That Just, there, there's a suicide hotline that's nationwide. Uh, they can call our dispatch. I mean, we're, we're not here to just cause people misery. We're here to help people. And uh, I'd be glad to, if, if people could call me. If I was here at the office, I'd try to talk them out of doing it. I mean, it's, it's a permanent solution to a, a temporary problem is what suicide, that's all suicide is. Uh, they, they have bad days. Those days aren't gonna stay bad. They're gonna get better. And we would love for them to call the Andrews Center which is our local mental health authority here in Smith County. Uh, any one of the hospitals would be glad to talk to them or uh, any counselor. Uh, there, there's many counselors that don't cost anything. Um, the church I go to, Green Acres Baptist Church, has counselors, that uh, many at no charge uh, to anyone. So uh, it, it's not an issue. Uh, Getting counseling is not an issue of, of having insurance like drug abuse or drug addiction is where you, you can't get a treatment facility unless you have the money. You can find counseling for suicide issues, but uh, if somebody is, if you're a friend of someone who's putting out those vibes that, that you think they might be, get them help, get them to talk to someone. Thank you. I'm, I'm done. Done? All right. Yes, ma'am.